Hey guys and welcome to sunny Spain. So we're here doing warm weather testing, something I've been wanting to do throughout the winter of the Volvo EX90, but also the Polestar 3 we have over here. And later this week or next week, not sure when all these videos are going up, we're actually gonna do a double comparison test between these two cars and also a double review comparing them on the exterior, interior, driving dynamics, price, and everything. So if you don't wanna miss out on a lot of cool videos coming from our week down here in Spain, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And guys, this trip is all thanks to you. Late last year, I started a GoFundMe asking you guys for support to go on this trip because this is an expensive trip. Me flying out with a videographer, us staying here for a week and also somebody helping me driving the other car also. Like this is not free. So if you do want to support this trip, there will be a link to the GoFundMe down below. All donations, all support is appreciated. If you don't want to support, well, just continue on watching the content for free. For free. It's up to you, but we really do, you know, appreciate the support. So a lot of cool videos coming this week, thanks to you guys, and they will be rolling out in the weeks to come. But this video, today's video is all about the EX90 twin performance on 21 inch wheels and seeing how much range we can get out of this at 120 kilometers an hour. So we're about an hour and a half south of Madrid in a place called uh, Calazegas or uh, uh, Talavana is the city over here and the Calazegas is right over there. I think the charging station here is Ionti Calazegas, but I think the closest city is actually uh, Talavana. And we're here at an elevation of about 300 meters and we're gonna drive about an hour southwest this way towards Portugal to about 250 meters. So compared to the test I do at home, the elevation here is a little bit higher. It's like 50 meters higher. I think the test I do at home is like between 200 and 300 meters. This is between like 250 and 350 meters. And I know, you know, when I suggested to go to the Madrid area to do these tests, there were people concerned because the city of Madrid is actually a lot higher at an elevation of like 700 meters. But we have specifically traveled to this point because this should be a very nice stretch of motorway at a lower elevation and also temperatures today is pretty nice it's like 18 degrees celsius now and it's probably going to get a little bit warmer maybe like 22 or 23 so perfect conditions for what we'd call scandinavian winter north european winter which you know is relevant for a lot of you guys so without further ado let's jump into the ex90 take it down this road and see how much range will get out of this at 120 kilometers an hour or 75 miles an hour. Finally guys, I have an EX90 on loan, not at an event or at a launch where we're gonna drive on a fixed route or we have limited time. I actually have this car for about a week, plus minus a week. I have a lot of other cars I'm going to test this week, as I said in intro, Polestar 3, Polestar 4, Audi Q6 e-tron, trying to get a hold of an Audi A6 e-tron, also Skoda, Elrock, and maybe a few other cars. We'll see what I'm able to do. I already have planned like 10, 12 videos to be filmed in like seven days, which is like two a day, which is like, yeah, usually I film like four in a week. So that's pretty much three times my, my weekly uh, workload. So this is not a vacation. This is not a holiday. Of course, the weather is nice. And of course, I want to see if I could check out Madrid in the weekend, like Saturday at least. We're traveling back on Sunday. So again, thank you so much, guys, for making this trip possible. And again, if you do want to support this trip and support trips like this, yeah, this is a cool concept. And hopefully we can do more of these trips because traveling down here and seeing the mountains in the background this is a beautiful part of Spain where I have not spent a lot of time I was lucky to go to Madrid though that was north of the city about an hour north hour and a half north uh, with Polestar last year at the launch of the three and the four but I've never been this way but I'm also going to test another car the Zeker 7x I'm actually tomorrow driving to Lisbon which is four or five hours this way west on this road uh, to the launch of the Seeker X. So I'm pretty excited about that. And yeah, 
So today we are in the EX90 and of course the roads here in Spain are normally really, really nice. There's a completely different asphalt quality than we have in Scandinavia. So I'm not going to be doing, you know, my instrumented road noise test because that wouldn't, you know, be comparable at all. But the rest of this should be very comparable. We're doing the same speed, 120 kilometers an hour. Elevation changes are about the same and also the elevation is pretty much the same like maybe there's going to be like a percent or two difference but i mean these tests aren't that accurate from the onset that you know that will make any meaningful difference it's all about getting these cars testing them before the summer and during nice conditions so at least for a few days we're going to have really nice temperatures and nice weather it's 22 degrees celsius now sunny skies and yeah really enjoying my time in this ex90 and Though this is on 21 inch wheels and we are going 120 kilometers an hour, a combination of the asphalt quality here and also this isolated cabin, this is such a quiet car. Though on some of the rougher parts, like where they have concrete instead of asphalt, you can really, you know, just feel that suspension working and also that road noise. But here, it's, it's pretty, pretty decent. So I'm liking this car. Do I like it more than the Polestar 3? Well, we're gonna do a full comparison video to find out that. But I have to say, having driven both today, they are actually very different in the way they drive, which is very interesting. So, update after about you know, 20, 25 minutes on the road, 40, 45 kilometers. Our average consumption is 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So this car doesn't have any uh, decimal places, which may potentially be a problem getting, you know, that super accuracy as i said you know these tests were not able it's not a scientific test done in a laboratory it's real world testing where there are going to be you know variations like weather road conditions temperature wind and stuff like that so on our way about 35 minutes further down the road here we're going to have a push in the southwest direction of about three meters per second so it's interesting to see once we get to the repsol station where we're going to turn around what our consumption is then if it's dropped or maybe gone up we're approaching our turnaround point here at the repsol station in a town called majadas or majadas if you're spanish and from this area let me know if it's majadas or majadas um, so we're gonna pull up here and i have to say this car is such a nice car to drive on the motorway it's quiet it's comfortable and the road surface here is really you know variable this reminds me a lot of you know norwegian roads what we have here earlier we had you know concrete which was very bumpy and then we've had really smooth asphalt so like the i'm, I'm really glad i chose this road i've been looking at you know maps for a few weeks trying to find good roads around the area to do testing here and this road seems to be a a, a really nice road for this this car also has the Bose sound system, which is one up from the standard. Or is the Bose standard? I'm not sure. That may be different from, from market to market. But it does not have the Bowers and Wilkins sound system. But the Polestar 3 I have on loan does, which is interesting. So I'm going to talk a little bit about in my review, you know, comparing these uh, two systems. So we're pulling up here and then we want to check out our consumption. And this route also is going to be about the same length as I normally do. We've covered now 95 kilometers. My route is 194, the one at home. I think this is going to be like 194, 195, like <laughs> entrance to exit and back to entrance again. So it's pretty, pretty decent. But okay, we're pulling off here now and then we're going to turn around. Um, average assumption, guys, 22 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So I tested the Polestar 3 at the launch in Madrid about a year ago or May last year and there was a few flaws with that test we weren't able to do ABA testing like we do here we're starting one place going to the to a destination and going back that's to eliminate differences in elevation and also wind wind is a very important thing because electric cars electric motors are so efficient that you know the HVAC system is going to be a big factor of the consumption and also the uh, you know the wind in a combustion engine car, you're actually using very little of that available energy, like 70% is like just going out to, to heat. So that's why, you know, it may seem like EVs are sensitive, but the fact that they're just very efficient, that, you know, you're using electricity for other things, you're really gonna notice that. 
So we're gonna enter here now. We're gonna go back and this is gonna be really, really interesting to see what kind of consumption we're gonna be able to get with this car. So we're gonna go about 100 meters higher in elevation getting back, but also that tailwind we had on our way down is gonna be a headwind. So I'm not expecting us to, you know, that 22.0 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I think that's actually going to go up maybe one or two kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, but yeah. That's why we're doing this test. We're gonna go back now. For me, it's gonna be an hour. For you, it's gonna be fade to black and fade back. Okay, guys, so we're about to exit back to the Ionity charging station here in Casalegas, where we started this range test almost two hours ago, an hour and about 41, 42 minutes. We're gonna stop the timer right down the road here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna connect back to the charters where we charge the car up today and see what charging speed we get after driving on the road for a few hours with passive heating of the battery. This car does have active preconditioning if we navigate to a charger or if we you know, uh, need a charger on the route but it's 23 degrees Celsius outside now. Uh, the battery should be up to temperature. And also we do a different test here on the channel called the long trip test, which is a test to do back in Norway. So I can't do that test here in Spain because that is on a very specific route. Um, so we're going to have to wait until that. But I do have, you know, a, an EX90 press car on loan in early May. <laughs> that was the earliest they could get me a press car. I mean, there's a lot of, lot of, uh, interest in this car by Norwegian journalist and I've been pushed uh, so far back in the line that actually I was able to get a car a month earlier here in Spain instead of uh, instead of in, in Norway which is quite funny. So it's interesting the Ionity charging station here is in the middle of nowhere and no gas station, no store, no toilets, no nothing which is uh, which is quite quite funny. So we're gonna go here. The charge port should be here on the left side, on the passenger side. And what's also interesting is that when we started here and put the route into the route planner, the car said we would arrive back here with 41%, but we're actually here with 53%, and that is overshooting it quite a bit. So I'm not gonna reveal the consumption yet. We're gonna connect here, we'll see what charge speed we get after, you know, 50%, um, 53% state to charge and also we'll reveal that range at the end when we do the calculations. Okay, so the charge port on the EX90 is here on the passenger, passenger side on the rear three quarter. So it's nice using these Ionity chargers because I can use my Ionity charging app that I normally use back in Norway where I do my range test. So that is really nice, the same app, the same interface. Um, and it's one of the cheapest providers, as long as you have, you know, the Ionity Passport, which is like, I don't know, it's like 12 euros, 140 kroners in Norway. Um, and then in Norway, it's three kroner per kilowatt hour. That is super cheap. Here, it's like 0.37 euro, which is all, already cheap, but it's the same interface. I can use the same map I'm used to, and it just works uh, flawlessly. So I may, you know, download another charging app during our week here in, in, in Spain, but so far the Ionity charging app should work nicely. And tomorrow when we're going to Portugal, we're probably gonna leave here tomorrow and then there should be like two or three Ionity chargers on the way. I don't know, so we, I, the app won't show the actual, we're not allowed to choose the charger, like this thing is so buggy. Turned out to be a well-planned good trip. We had, you know, charting stops planned and turned out to be a nightmare. Three out of three charters not working. I mean, tell me that red means this is working. Of course not, it doesn't. Or have you ever tried a charger that's red and works? No, I, I don't think so. So let's hop in, cross our fingers. We have enough charge to get to the hotel, but I don't think so. I don't know what we're gonna do, I don't know. And as you can see here, there are no other cars. The only other car is the Polestar 3, which is a car we have, and it's in the middle of nowhere. There are no toilets here. There's no, you know, store or gas station to, you know, buy stuff or anything as we're used to in Norway, which is kind of interesting. I think it was like this in Norway, maybe five, six years ago. So hopefully when, you know, the infrastructure gets better here in Spain, we'll see more charging stations at gas stations, stuff like that. So if you come closer here now, we're currently at 
percent state to charge we're getting 63 kilowatts but it should creep up a little bit more okay so 141 kilowatts i don't think we're going to get much more speed than that and for that there are a few reasons so first off we are at 53 percent state of charge to get the peak charging speed out of this car which is 250 kilowatts we have to be at probably below 20 or below 30 percent but also that 250 kilowatts is with a very big caveat and that is because this car is on a 400 volt architecture and if you're going to charge at one of these chargers which output a maximum of 500 amps that's a maximum of 200 kilowatts then you may be asking chris so how is how are you able to get 250 kilowatts into one of these well you're able to do that at a tesla supercharger because tesla superchargers though they have you know the ccs2 plug here in norway they aren't actually ccs standards they are tesla supercharger superchargers tesla's own proprietary technology and that means they can output if they want more than 500 amps and that's what they do when you connect one of these or one of that which is on the same platform they're outputting like 625 amps and that's how you're able to get 250 kilowatts so not able to get close to that today but 145 it's, it's still decent it's still decent okay guys so let's take a look at the results so we take the usable battery capacity of this car which is 107 kilowatt hours we divide it by the consumption 26 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and then we subtract three percent for heat and discharging losses that gives us a theoretical range under today's conditions of 399 kilometers and that's both good and bad worse than what that was hoping but also I mean it's real world range of 400 kilometers in a three row seven seat large and luxurious boxy SUV I don't think that's too bad I think expecting a lot more than that is a very tall order even though it has a big battery it is a large large car it's like almost three tons it's high off the ground it has big wheels three rows lots of interior storage and room so yeah but with that being said 26 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers is higher than i was hoping i was hoping maybe 24 maybe i was optimistic getting closer to 450 kilowatts so hmm it's going to be interesting to see in the next video which is the range test of the polestar 3 same day same road same wheel and tire size will that be able to get more range and if so how much more range so guys subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss out on the next video which is the polestar 3 range test and also the video after that we're going to do a direct comparison we're going to drive these cars back to back side by side to get that real real comparison so guys let me know what you think of the results of the ex90 i'm a little bit disappointed but at the same time we're really expecting that much more of this large large three row seven seat suv so guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always please subscribe see you guys later and goodbye